What's going on, E Unit? Welcome back. It's your boy Mav. We back at it with the fighting game Legacy. It's, you know how we get down. We're going to play as Mitsuru. Um, I do I do have a SC1 on an emulator, but the problem with my emulator is sometimes the picture will get fuzzy, and I didn't want any interference with that, so I skipped SC1 and went straight to SC2, everyone's favorite. Alright, let's go. Playing with my boy Mitz. Come on, Shangwa. Actually, you know what? Let's go back out and let's read his bio. Let's go read his bio real quick. Because there is a there is a bio in there. There. I'm gonna go to extra real quick. Actually no, it's a museum. Alright, here we go. We're gonna read the bio. Though, although Mitsurugi was born into a peasant family, this did not stop him from becoming a renowned mercenary with names such as One Man Army and Demon. One day, Mitsurugi, beaten by a rifle called Tanegashima, which happened in the last game we played, happened upon the story of a master sword called Soul Edge. Mitsurugi crossed the ocean in search of Soul Edge during his journey. He heard rumors that Soul Edge's weird nightmare had disappeared, but Mitsurugi was unwilling to give up. Four years after his quest had begun, Mr. Ruby stumbled upon the trail of Soul Edge while visiting a castle near the Ming frontier. A mysterious man handed him a piece of Soul Edge. Mitsurugi had his doubts, but ultimately decided to believe the man. <coughs> Excuse me. Soon afterwards, an incident occurred where a servant of Ming Emperor arrived at the castle, demanding for the Sword of Heroes. The Lord slew the servant when he refused to leave without the sword. War is coming, thought Mr. Ruby. He sensed the same storm brewing that he had felt before on countless battlefields. Alright, so, basically, he's going to jump himself into battle. Still on, still on the search for the hero sword, which could be Soul Edge. So, he now has a fragment of it. He's pretty much going to get the rest of the pieces. Alright, let's run it. Same custom. Now, Miss Sarugi is definitely in my top five for favorite characters. Because, you know, he's very, very fun to use. Like, he's the stereotypical, like, Ryu character, basic, balanced character of this whole series. If I have not explained that already. This playstyle has not changed as much from the previous game. Alright, here we go. Alright, Nightmare. I'm so used to playing this on the GameCube sometimes. I'll be holding the controller like this instead of this. Hit you with his knee. Mm, mm. Come on, Nightmare. Look at how I'm sweeping him. <laughs> That's hilarious. This all I sweeped him three times. And I got the same animation. Alright, let's go. Come on. Oh, I forgot. That's how you grab. It's vertical and uh, it's triangle and box because I'm used to in Tekken. Oh, shoot. 
I'm used to Antekin. Dang, I'm trying to get behind you and grab you. There we go. Because in Tekken, it's uh, triangle and circle. But I'm like, wrong game. It's triangle and X to grab. Which is funny because in SC6, they changed that to do the reversal edge. Oh, not my baby Talim. No pedal, though. I always got to say that because Talim's listed age is 15. But she's my favorite female character. Hopefully, I'll do a legacy portion on her. You know what? I'm not even going to slash you with my sword. That's how much I love you. I'm not even going to slash you with my sword. Ah! No. Ah, sweep her! Nope. You're not doing that to me. I told you I wasn't going to slash her, and I didn't. You know, I sh does he still have that move where he smacks you with the hilt? Because I know he had it in uh, Soul Blade. Hold on. I'm going to see if it's the same input. No, you, on the other hand, could get slashed as many times as I presume necessary. Come on, bro. Yup, he still has it. He smacks you with the hilt. Three more stages to go. Because in this game, you have eight stages instead of ten. Raphael. Let's get it. Rawr. It's probably 11 o'clock. I'm getting sleepy. Come on, Raph. Come on, Raph. Don't do me like that. Left you. Dang, you didn't have to kick me in my jaw like that, Raph. Yeah, he's not gonna say anything. Alright, Tacky, we gotta let this because it's a cutscene. Jeez. Hmm. Launchers. Let's go. Smack him with the hill. Ah, dang. Man, I'm about to die. Nope, nope. Get kicked in your head. because everybody has their own thing that they say to Inferno. Could this be where the fragment emanates? Let's go. But later on in the series, I want to say by the next game, Mr. Rugi com does a complete different character change. Instead of looking for Soul Edge, he just goes into complete Ryu mode. Find the strongest foe, beat him, and become the strongest. Copy my style will get you nowhere, buddy boy. Go ahead and get all your fire back. Mmm, come here. <sighs> Slash him again. Ah! Come on. Itchy. Alright. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. Launchers for days. Oh, crap. Ah, he got me. Run it back. Ah. 
He's lucky I couldn't even guard against that. I tried to punish him. Man, I don't even do that much damage to this dude. Alright, I'm going to hurry up and finish you. I'm going to just hurry up and finish you. If you did not have to wind up and do that, we would be safe. We got that cheating bow staff. But I can't hack him because Keelix my guy. Anywho. Just had to wrap it up quickly there. Alright. Alright, here we go. After countless battles and deadly duels, Mitsurugi finally possessed Soul Edge, the ultimate sword. But he soon realized that the weapon was inherently evil. Surely this can't be the sword I've been seeking. Mitsurugi shattered the demonic blade to pieces. Without a moment's rest, Mitsurugi embarked on another journey to find the true sword.